Hey Facebook world, it is Eric Mitchell here from To The Point Election Edition. We didn't do a show yesterday because we let the pros go and well, well, some of the pros did a really good job and well, our friends at Fox, they decided to see how much diesel fuel they could pour into a dumpster and light all of them on fire. But I wanted to bring a pro on because we need some pros. We've heard enough people tell you how great Trump is and I know he wants votes to stop, but we have our good friend of the show and uh, <laughs> He's what I would call an expert after serving under Vice President Gore and under Vice President and hopefully soon to be President-elect Vice President Biden. We have Movila joining us. So let's get right to it. Let me, I'm swaying all over the place trying to get everybody in here. Hey, Mo, how you doing this morning? Eric, it's always good to be back with you, my brother. Oh. You're always fighting the good fight. We are. Uh, and now more, than, now more than ever, man, we can't, we can't give up. We got to keep the faith here. Woo, it is a crazy, I mean, all the emotion we went through yesterday, we, we knew that there would be this different recourse going through the, the day and into today with the votes yeah. being counted throughout the country. I live on the West Coast, so it's different, right? We know we do our job every election. Everybody knows we truly are the blue wall uh, that's guaranteed from Washington that's down true. to our border down in San Diego. We take care of our Democrats. Yeah. I wish other people could do that. It proved a few things, and let's kind of, before we get into news of the day and what where this is going, these polls seem to be all wrong. Whoever's taking these polls, they should all be fired, because they were I all agree wrong. With that. <laughs> I, I agree with that 150%. Yeah. Uh, they were, not only they, were they wrong, they were profoundly and dramatically wrong. Uh, and uh, I just, honestly, for eight months, I've on every interview I've done, I've always been saying I never trust polls. They, they, I thought that they could give us patterns and trends. That's all I ever referred to them as. Yeah. But now I don't even trust that because no. um, I think pollsters and the polling industry is going to take a massive hit. And I'll tell you, Eric, on this topic, it's interesting because one of the lessons, at least I'm personally taking out of this mess, uh, is on this polling topic is that we are going to have to find a way to use technology more effectively in the polling uh, sector. Uh, and I think it's just a matter of time uh, when technology catches up and, and, and we use it in a manner that will be much more predictable and accurate and with much more integrity. And it's funny that you say that, Mo, because Brittany Kaiser was just on Newsmax TV, said the same thing. Now, Brittany's going to be on in an hour with us over here at To The Point, saying the same exact thing you're talking about. Why is it so difficult in an age where you can buy a home, buy a car using electronics? We right. can't vote. We can do everything else on our phones, but voting, it's where, no, no, it's not secure. No, it is. Paper voting is old school as old school gets. It's very funny that we wouldn't have any of these problems if we're using, you know, bit chain and all this other wonderful technology that's, that's, that's exactly out there. right i mean eric think about this if i literally go google the word car within minutes i am receiving car ads yep right now i'll tell you where the biggest concern i have on this well let's not go there i i i, I haven't <laughs> slept so yeah, I mean, we have a lot to, to do. Well, I get ads on a lot of really strange stuff, and yeah. it really starts to worry me that maybe somebody's watching me in the shower. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, well, you know, you, you, you make a lot of friends when you do your other – when you go on certain <laughs> networks, you make, some, you make some interesting friends. And you don't have to worry about this here. Everybody here is a huge fan of Mo. When we went on earlier, we said you were coming on as our <laughs> first guest. They love you around here. So you're not going to get any well, hateful tweets from our team here at To The Point. We well, love you. Thank you. I won't need to go on Twitter and tell everybody to behave. Uh, <laughs> yeah, golly. Wasn't that disappointing? Uh, well, and I'm, I'll be I'm not surprised. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I have refused to go back on because of that. Good for you. Um, and I, 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 I felt like um, that the least that we all owe each other is to have each other's back, mm -hmm. even if we don't agree. But when it's a personal attack and so that your viewers understand what we're talking about, uh, oh, yeah. I received uh, some very personal attacks on my last Newsmax appearance. And the anchor came uh, on and he told you to be quiet, not... He told me racist. to be quiet, and he told me, look, if people don't want me to have you on, 
but it's important that we hear the, your perspective. And and then on Twitter, he didn't defend me against the personal attacks where I was being told that I hope you're so fat, I hope you get COVID and you're going to die. And, you know, things like that. And your face is as round as the moon, which I thought was hilarious because I personally love the moon. So I was just like, hey, I'll, I'll take that all day. I'm, uh, I look like the moon. Thank you, uh, I guess. I mean, yeah, I get it. Gotta, I mean, we both get it, Mo. Now. I mean, we get fought with. So let's jump into this. I know we only have you for a limited time because you are like yeah. the hottest thing since sliced bread. Oh, well, you're right. all over TV, my friend, seeing you on the BBC and everywhere. I saw you this morning on Good Morning Britain with the great Piers Morgan Piers talking Morgan, about great yeah. things. You, you're that was amazing. It, that was actually amazing, by the way, because Reggie loved Barack Obama's uh, – personal aide was on with me and and Frank Lutz, the Republican pollster. And that was amazing with Pierce and Susanna actually it was a great, it was. Uh, beautiful great conversation. Mm -hmm. I loved it. So let's talk about this. Now you've, you, you've had experience working with Vice President Biden. So he comes out last night. I thought it was wonderful when he came out. He did exactly what you would expect traditionally yeah. in, in presidential races, came out and said, it's not over. We all know it's not. We feel right. good about these states. Well, I'm yeah. going to win. Didn't trash the competition. Didn't make no. outlandish. They didn't question my the process. It's my show so I can say it. Didn't make up bullshit and say it's rigged, it's cheating. And, yeah. and then, and then, well, two hours later, well, two hours and then some extra chunks because, well, Mr. I just take my sweet, you know what time coming out, uh, comes out on stage in the White House again. Thank God he doesn't violate the Hatch Act, but a whole bunch of other oh. people do. What comes Hatch out on Act? Yeah, comes out and accuses yeah. <laughs> accuses every state he's losing in that they're cheating, the election is rigged, and I'm going, okay, anybody who doesn't believe he doesn't hate the military, he just said the voting is over, but all states, so everybody out there who's never been deployed, never served our country, hey, Veterans Day is next week, the Marine Corps birthday is the day before, so let's break this down for you all. We vote, we count as voters. But we have to go defend our country in places that suck that you don't have to. Right. So we That's mail right. our ballots back. It takes a little bit of time because, hey, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, and Iraq, they're not known for their postal service. So it's not like something that just gets here overnight and they don't rush our mail. Yeah. All those votes will be counted in traditionally every election. Every election. Absentee ballots are usually, especially from our military, are over the next week. They're not rushed. That's right. It's what they've always As done. They could. So As he wants all the voting to stop, wants to go to the Supreme Court where he's cooked the books with his cult members yeah. and Kavanaugh yeah. who hates women. And, oh, by the way, just to go on that, I'm not shocked that the guy who disrespected you on Newsmax, the dude cuts off women all the time. But that's very typical with conservative males. They love to cut women off. It's their thing. Pence yeah. is an expert at it. But yeah. Yeah. we see the president come out and say these votes need to stop. Biden takes the high road, Trump takes the low road. This is something we've seen. From you, you, Now, you are an attorney. Where does this stand in your mind with where we're at? This is a court battle? Is I mean, are we going to be able to declare a winner? I mean, Biden, by the end of today, if, if polls stand true, and this again, polls, by the way, that's P-O-L-L-S, if you're playing at home. Those are the polls, not stripper polls. We know they're, the they're not polls about. today anymore, uh, Eric. These are actual votes. And these are votes that are being counted in those states. Yeah. So where you were headed with that, I'm sure, was that if, if Vice President Biden holds his lead in Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, and Michigan, and by the end of today, those four uh, leads are held and he ends up winning by the end of the day, which is what looks like is trending. That's what the patterns of actual votes being counted from what we know, from what's outstanding. And that is the key to all of these discussions, yep. my friend, yeah. is what is outstanding in each state right now. Now, all Where these votes count, they? right, Mo? I mean, these votes, if That's you right. mailed in your ballot, Absolutely. you did what you were told, these Absolutely. count and they're protected under the Constitution, Listen, right? That's the heart of a democracy. That is the heart and soul of a democracy. You count every vote that has legally and ethically been cast. And you want to know something really amazing? Have you heard one scandal in the last 48 hours about voting? No. Not one story. Nope. Not one story about irregularity. Now, listen, some technical things here and there. A machine didn't work. Or this, and that. Those are normal. Not one scandal, Eric. No. 
and and about an hour ago, the Trump campaign has announced that they're going to request a recount in Wisconsin. Of course. So that is going to prolong the outcome unless we also come back and win Pennsylvania, which is still possible. Mm -hmm. The lead is shrinking. Uh, and but we won't know Pennsylvania for a few days. Mm -hmm. But we might win Georgia, which, which would then offset it as well. So yeah. and Michigan. I mean, we only need two out of the three in the blue wall over there That's in right. the Northeast to to wrap this thing up. And well, I think we the have to hold Arizona wall. and Nevada. We have to hold Arizona and Nevada. But if we win Georgia, <laughs> it changes the dynamic again. And we, what's outstanding in Georgia, what's outstanding in Michigan, what's outstanding in Wisconsin, and what's outstanding in Pennsylvania, guess where they all are? Democratic. In control. Democratic strongholds. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that. so Trump, Trump is doing everything. Do you have children? Yes, I do. Okay. How old are they? Uh, my youngest is 13 and my okay. oldest is 23. Okay. So here's the deal. Let's talk about the 13-year-old. Not, I don't want to bring their name in or anything like that. But the 13-year-old, let's talk about that child. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a daughter, if I remember correctly. No, it's a son. My daughter it's watched the election with me. She's really excited. Oh, that's what I remember us talking about. So your 13-year-old son. Mm -hmm. So let's just say he's running for middle school student council president. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of this election and this middle school that he goes to, he comes home one night and he says to you, Dad, uh, it looks like I'm losing. I can just feel like there's no enthusiasm for my candidacy. At which time you have two choices. You either say, son, you let this play out. You take let it take its course and you lose or you win with grace, mm -hmm. with humility, with integrity and with class. That's what you have that choice as a parent. Or you can say, you should go tomorrow and start trying to see if you can derail the process or find some way to actually stop this process, son, because I don't want you to be humiliated and look like a loser. That's your other option. Now, I don't know any parent who picks option number two, except Donald J. Trump. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what he did at two o'clock this morning. He acted like that, that some parent told him as a child, go find a way because you're going to look like a big loser. And you need to do everything you can to to not look like a loser. It's saving he face knows. is what I see it, Mo. Absolutely. I, mean, I see but it you as don't he's say been it. telling his constituents at these freaking white power rallies that he legitimizing that yeah. he's you know he's sitting here going, "Hey, we won! It's going to be a red tide. We're going to just smoke everybody." And quickly, he's finding out the country number one. Yeah. And I'm not disrespecting uh, President Obama, who I know you served under, and I, I love the man. He's got a wicked three-point jump shot, I can tell you that. Yeah. Uh, and he's a damn good president. But yeah. Biden stands to have even more of the popular vote than Barack Obama at yeah. this point. Yeah, well, he already broke records, that's yeah, right. He's, yeah. I mean, he's smoking these records, yet this guy's up here at 2.30 a.m., 2.20. Somebody put in the notes here. Uh, <laughs> The White House gave sliders and french fries to 250 people last night. Mind you, there were children there who were waiting around. And, Mo, before you go, here's my last question for you. And we'll bring you back. I'm sure we'll, you'll, we'll try to squeeze in uh, more. By the way, before you, before, go I've got a few minutes. Before okay. you ask the last question, let mm -hmm. me just say this. Go ahead. You said Trump was trying to save face. Mm -hmm. let me, let's be very clear, Eric. You don't save face at the expense of this amazing nation. You don't save face at the expense of our beloved democracy. And you don't save face by diminishing or denigrating or not play, paying the proper respect to the votes of the American people, including our military abroad. Yep. And so you do not save face this tantrum Trump way. Uh, that's, you know, it's un-American and it's undemocratic, period. Amen. Okay. I, I agree. With I just you. want to make that clear. Uh, I love it. No, I mean, I was going there. You know me. I get all squirrel, yep. squirrely. And That's I've not how like, you say yeah. face. I, I've been, yeah. He, I mean, this guy's just, a, he's he's bad at losing and he comes out. I don't like losing. Nobody does, man. We have Super Bowls, yeah. NBA Finals, World right. Series. Do you think the Tampa Bay Rays are happy they lost the World Series? That's right. Do you think the 49ers are happy they lost to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? Or do you but they think? Go, no. Go but ahead. they go across the field and shake the victor's hand. Amen. And they move on. It's a new day. New that's day. what you teach your 13 year old son is oh, good dear. sportsmanship. Absolutely. Because yeah. it's part of your character we've and seen it's that. part of your integrity as a human. We've seen that. But I mean, we've seen people attack 
Uh, John McCain's daughter relentlessly the last few days. She called her father a hero, which he was. He was a POW, <laughs> served our country, and served us as a civil servant, well, as a senator. Very much a hero. I mean, great. Very much a hero. Okay. Great, great, Sorry. great man. Now but, your last question. <laughs> yeah, okay. Last question. Yesterday, as the election started, the U.S. Postal Service was ordered by a federal court to go sweep through their problematic postal offices, getting these missing ballots. They right. flat refused yesterday afternoon to do it, saying it would mess up normal service. <laughs> by the way, we already know they all suck and they're slow as it is. They refused to do it. So there's ballots sitting in there. What is going on with that? To me, that's a story that's kind of slid under the radar because the right doesn't want you looking at that because that's an issue. Again, the Postal Service <laughs> was an issue well, months ago. It still is a big issue. Yeah. So listen, here's the deal. Um, Yogi Berra once said, it's deja vu all over again. <laughs> uh, there aren't a ton of us who worked for Al Gore and then now, 20 years later, are <laughs> It's deja vu all over again. That's how I feel today, right? Um, and so here's the deal. Here's what we learned in 2000. We learned a, a lot of things. But the one of the biggest things I learned that I think will answer your question is uh, if the Trump campaign wants to play these legal challenge games and start using the court system, uh, bring it on is all I'm going to say to them because we know how to do that too. And let me tell you, we perfected it and we learned from 2000. We have lawyers ready to go who are experts in this, who, uh, as to your point, if they want to recount in Wisconsin or they want to legally challenge something in Pennsylvania, you know what, then fine. You know what, we can file lawsuits too to find out how many of those ballots that you just referenced are sitting in a post office somewhere. Mind you, they're postmarked most likely already, which make them legal ballots. So listen, two can play this game is my point. Oh, I Two can it. play this game. And so you know what? Uh, as an attorney, I can tell you this, there are thousands of them that believe like me. They're ready to go. They're fired up as Barack Obama would say, fired up, ready to go, roll up our sleeves. And you want to know something? You want to play that way? We're ready to go, homie. Let's go. We are. We're ready. But I, want to, I want to thank you, my friend, for joining us today. I know you're a busy man. You're everywhere. Thanks for taking the time to come on for our folks here to watch you with questions. Folks, if you need to catch Mo Vila, go follow him over on Twitter. Fire your questions over. He's beyond entertainment. Mo, we got to have you back. we got to talk about how some of these people you and I mutually don't you, like on Twitter. You know, you know how deeply proud I am of you. And thank you, my friend. grateful to you that you're a voice for reason and a voice for progressivism. Uh, in the in the traditional definition of the word, not uh, crazy socialist stuff, but rational, reasonable ways to improve the lives of human be beings. And I thank you for that. Thank, thank you, my, my brother. brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate you so much. God bless. Be safe. Let's have you on real soon. Thank you, man. Thanks, bud. Talk to you soon. So, everybody, that was Mo Vila. Hopefully, you guys got some good insight. If you have questions for Mo, you can catch him over on social on Twitter. He's very big on. Uh, Twitter. Mo Vila is, of course, his Twitter handle, just like that's his name. I'm going to be right back on with our next segment. We have Cooper Lawrence coming on to join us. This is a packed full day of we're going to be hopping on live and off live back and forth. We even have the backdrop disappearing on us. Hey, because that's normal for that to happen on, on me. I don't even know what's going on behind me here. This is this is new. I don't know what that is. But hey, we'll deal with it. You get my black screen for right now. But hey, we'll fix that and come back on. We do have the amazing and wonderful Cooper Lawrence joining us. We're going to be talking about more fallout that's going on. A little bit of what's going on with Kanye. He conceded like he was going to win. Uh, and we'll have more information coming in uh, as we get it. Uh, so stay tuned. We have Cooper Lawrence. Then we are following up. We have about a 30-minute break. And then we will have the amazing Brittany Kaiser, who was the whistleblower in Cambridge Analytica 2016. Uh, Brittany's amazing background, folks. Before you go, before I sign off here, Brittany, sir, was the campaign, one of the campaign leads that helped Barack Obama and also helped Trump 2016. She has more insight than we know. And no, she is no longer a Republican. She bats for our team, folks. So we're going to have some good insight. She's going to throw some blows uh, on our friend. She was already on Newsmax TV earlier this morning, just throwing some massive elbows on people. She's not backing down. She'll have some insightful information. So stay tuned for Cooper Lawrence 
Then my good buddy Brittany Kaiser will join us, followed by Richard Bernstein. And later on the day, we have from the Lincoln Project, the amazing and talented and Army veteran, West Point grad, combat helo pilot, Fred Wellman will be joining us later in the day. So you don't want to miss today. We will have live updates as they come in. Thanks for tuning in right now. We'll be right back in just shortly. So check out this next segment with Cooper Lawrence.